the machine? I think so. Good. Excellent. Are we okay, technology department? Almost. Almost. <clears throat> we're all right for the hymns. We're okay. Yes, we're okay. We're okay. Ah, good. Right. Well, we get started. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. It's the uh, uh, second Sunday after Trinity. Lovely morning, nice and sunny. Can't beat it, can you? How's the weather been treating you? Has it been nice and warm? Too hot. Too warm? Do we need some rain? Yes. yes. Is your garden getting dry? Yes. I go out with the hose pipe every day, you know, as per instructions. I mean the watering can, not the hose pipe. No. We've got some music going somewhere. Right, good. Okay. For those of you who need a hymn book, you prefer a hymn book, have you got a red one and a brown one? Yes. Good. And have you got a yellow card? in case you need it. If you don't need it, it should be all on the screen, hopefully. Looking carefully at them. Yeah, I think we're okay. Right, well, we'll start then um, with our first hymn. It's in the Red Book, for those who want to use the book. Number 422, Tell Out My Soul. Are we okay? surveys that we're doing in church if you could fill them in please no names just fill them in your honest opinions 
and so that the PCC can turn around and see where we're going to. One is about the service review and the other one is about reordering this church. That is looking at the, the way that we use the church and the building itself, etc. So we need your honest opinions, please, and uh, then we know where we are as a PCC. Right, okay then. Jesus promised that he is present whenever people meet in his name. So let us greet one another as members of God's family. The Lord is here. His spirit is with Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanks, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your praise reaches up to the heavens. Before the mountains were made, or before you had even formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The Lord is our God. He is worthy to receive glory and honour and power, for he has created and redeemed us. We sing our second hymn, which is Cornerstone. It isn't in the book, so it's one of the new hymns.
Please be seated. We ask for God's forgiveness. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are sorry that we have done what we wanted instead of what you wanted us to do. We ask you to forgive us and to help us to be the people you would like us to be. We ask this for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. <clears throat> May Almighty God forgive us, help us to follow Jesus' way of life, and guide us with his Holy Spirit. And I call it for today. Second Sunday of Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> now, uh, Les is going to uh, read Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 to 25. <clears throat> For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from, you, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let it also be guided by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that's um, an extract from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Um, I'd like you to, to bear with me while I just give a little bit of a lead up to what uh, Les has uh, read to us. It's very important that we understand why Paul writes this letter. To say the least, Paul is not a happy chappy when he writes this letter to the Galatians. His uh, letter departs from the formal style found in other letters he had written. Gone is the customary giving of thanks for the addresses. The urgency of the letter, some incomplete sentences, 
and the intensity of its wording indicates how Paul feels about the current situation within the Galatian community. Writing to the Christians living in that Central Asia Minor, where the people were Gentiles of Celtic nature, called Galatians or Galatian in Greek, it's the reason that's how we get the, the word in Galatians, Paul has heard that the Christians of Jewish origin have insisted that members must accept circumcision and take on the obligation to obey the law of Moses to share in the new covenant community. Those of Jewish origin were secretly brought in to spy and undermine Paul's activities, no doubt were sent from the high priests in Jerusalem, knowing of Paul's success of bringing many to Christ. Paul reminds the Galatian community that the message of grace which he preached to them came from God and that it has been confirmed through his personal encounter with Christ and his effectiveness of his preaching to them. Further, his outreach to them has been approved by the Jewish, sorry, the Jerusalem-based apostles. Well, as we all know that uh, Paul was called Saul. In the early days, he was a tent maker and uh, he was, for better words, doing the dirty work for the high priest. He was collecting, rounding up the early day Christians who had dispersed from Jerusalem in fear of their faith. And we know that uh, Saul was going round, as I say, and rounding up these people for further punishment. And as we know that when Paul, uh, Saul, like Paul, Saul, you've got to get it right, Saul um, was on one of these missions on his road to, on the road to Damascus. We know that uh, Christ uh, confronted him and Christ, as he said, Saul, why do you persecute me? And we know that three days later that Saul was uh, converted to, uh, to the new uh, covenant. We know that uh, once he'd uh, been converted, he, along with Barnabas, spent some years in Asia Minor uh, talking and converting the, the uh, Galatian people into Christianity. And we do know for a fact that uh, on the return from uh, Asia Minor to uh, Jerusalem that uh, the apostles well received what uh, they'd heard about Paul and Barnabas uh, that they'd done. And we do know that on the second visit that Paul took to uh, Asia Minor that he, he did it alone without Barnabas as the two of them fell out about who they should take as their aids. In his letter, Paul reminds the Galatians that participation in God's people has always been a divine gift to be accepted through the trust in God's promise to them, not of human achievement. Again, he reminds them that the life in the new community is open to all regardless of ethnic, sexual or social boundaries. And he regrets that many of the community seem to be inclined to accept the legalistic regulations as imposed by the Jewish false teachers and appeals to them to disregard this and remain strong to the biblical precedent which he has uh, preached to them for the freedom which he proclaims. Clearly the, the false teaching is wanting to remain with the the old law and circumcision, not moving on, not accepting the fact that the Messiah has come and things have changed. Paul again drives on the point that the rich resource for the life of faith is the spirit which God provides for them rather than the reliance on corrupt human instincts and urges. The Christian freedom Paul writes about is a complete breakaway from the old Jewish law. For those who believe in circumcision and uphold in the law, cut themselves from Christ and have fallen away from God's grace. 
Again, the community is reminded through the Spirit by faith, we eagerly await for the hope of righteousness for in Jesus Christ. Neither circumcision or non-circumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. Paul is confident that those who have been persuaded by the false teachings will eventually reject it and the false teachers will pay for the, their misgivings and heavy penalties for it. To demonstrate Paul's anger towards the false teachers, he says, but my friends, why am I still being persecuted if I am still preaching, the, preaching circumcision? In that case, the offence of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you go and castrate themselves. Pretty strong stuff, isn't it? Christian freedom. In the Old Testament, we learn of the coming of Christ through the prophets. So before faith came, the early believers were imprisoned, guarded and guided by the Jewish law until faith, Christ, was revealed. The law was their disciplinarian until Christ came, so that they may be justified by faith. But now faith had come, they were no longer subject to the disciplinarian, for they were now free from it. And in Christ Jesus, they were now all children of God, through faith, being baptised into Christ and clothing themselves with Christ. The freedom Paul writes about is faith working through love. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, works of the flesh, but through love. Be slaves to one another, for the whole of the law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. By gosh, that's a lot to ask, isn't it? From our reading, we learn Paul writes, live by the Spirit, do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. If we live by the spirit, let us be guided by the spirit. The reading demonstrates the contrast between living by the spirit or living by the flesh. Well, what of today? What Paul writes of Christian freedom is applicable to us today as it was when he wrote it. We live to Christ. He made the ultimate sacrifice, dying to free us from our sins. He is our advocate in heaven. He is our cornerstone. And his teachings has given us the way that we should live our lives. We all aspire, as did Paul, to be the absolute Christian. But our human frailty lets us down. At best we can be is the almost Christian. But we have a loving, caring and forgiving God who knows our frailty. And when we ask for forgiveness of our sins with a true and sincere heart, our sins will be forgiven. So there we see the two contrasts, the coming of Christ, our sins are given, forgiven, but in the old way that even now the Jewish people still believe the Messiah is still to come and still live by the old laws. So let us stand and declare our faith. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father who made all things? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with also with you. May we exchange this sign of... Oh, that's, that, oh, that's nice. Well done, Ian. I'm, I'm very impressed with that. Gives his wife a nice one. Brilliant, yes. Um, I've just got to say that we did open the book on uh, what was it on um, Wednesday, wasn't it? And uh, we did uh, Graham was was Jesus Christ, and of course there we are all in the in the lock room, and of course Jesus appears in front of them, and there. What did you say? Peace be with you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and of course then we're all supposed to stand there and be happy and jump up and down. Oh, I did feel a fool. The kids enjoyed it though, I thought it was very funny, but lovely. Peace be with you, that's right, yeah. Right, we will do our offertory hymn now, which is at 305 in the Red Book, if you want to use the book. I'm sure some people do still like using the book. Which is, I don't know. For all the saints. Thanks, 
say the offering prayer together. With our praise, O Lord, accept these gifts which we bring to you in love and gratitude and use them for the good of your church. Let us pray. Let us pray to our God in faith, knowing that he understands what is best for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for our church and its people, for our lay ministers, deacons, priests and bishops. You are the focus of our love and worship, because you alone are the Lord who has made us and rescued us. May we not return to the slavery of sin, but live in your freedom, serving you and in thankfulness for all you have done for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray for all the areas of the world which are torn apart by sin, hatred and violence, civil war, religious differences, corruption and greed, famine and disease. So we pray for all in positions of leadership and influence in our world, that they may use that power wisely and honestly to eradicate such evils for the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we pray for our community that you will make our homes and our relationships places where people know you by the way that we look at them and treat them, that they are valued, cherished and respected for who they are. We ask you to reassure and encourage us in this parish, give us insight to the real needs and to the direction that you would have us to do. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. In the quietness of our own hearts, we pray for those who ask of our prayers but are only known to us. And we pray for those who ask for the prayers of this congregation gathered here this morning. We pray for Keith Porters, Pauline Gainsborough, Gary Williams, Irene Wilson, Jean Smith, Janet Anderton, Colin Betteridge, Angela Gormley, Keely Thompson, Dame Mary and Friedrich Barbara Johnson. Father, where there is pain and suffering, whether physical, emotional, mental or spiritual, May they sense your love, comfort, and fulsome healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for those who have left this earthly life, the bereaved families and friends of Sybil Dobbs. Father in heaven, we welcome into your eternity Sybil, who has died to the life to this life. May, the, may she rest and know the freedom and joy of your heaven. Comfort those who mourn there and reach into their pain with your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, as we marvel afresh today at your majesty and humility, we thank you for the extent of your love for which there is no limits and expect acceptation, ex exemption, providing always encouragement and inspiration and need for the work you would like us to do. Give us the grace to trust your will for us to walk forward and boldly in your company. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We we'll say together now the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us rededicate ourselves to God. All through this week, our Father, help us to know you better and to make you better known by doing what pleases you and giving ourselves for the service of others. For Jesus Christ, Amen. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And our final hymn is uh, in the Brown Book, number 122. Two. I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. Oh 
serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.